Hi folks, it's the Hogtie Champ here. This is going to be my first video. I just got this new computer, I got the new software, I don't know how to do any of it. But I just watched a video by the Atheist Antidote and it, uh, it begs a response. I'm not even sure how to do this because I know that these arguments have been refuted dozens of times. But it seems like a fun thing to do on an afternoon when I'm still wearing my pajamas. So there are only two real models for the origin of humans. One camp saying that there was an intelligent designer, the other is saying there was an explosion. You know, I find it really interesting that you start off your video with a classic false dichotomy. And the real irony of it is that we accept your false dichotomy, and given that there's so much information that shows that a Big Bang had actually taken place or some expansion of the universe, the only reasonable conclusion from your argument is that there is no God. Well done. I mean, ultimately, it just shows what a zealot you are that you can't consider other possibilities that other Christians have come to accept, such as there was a Big Bang and an expansion of the universe um, because God thought that was a good idea. You seem to deny any possibility that God was behind the Big Bang. That is, if there was an expansion of the universe, then certainly that's not something God would have thought of doing. Ben Stein's movie. Then again, I suppose that's all we can expect from somebody who doesn't know the difference between biology and cosmology. You're actually arguing that humans were either created by a creator or humans were created in the Big Bang. It's very puzzling. Okay then, go ahead. Let's hear what you have to say about biology. Take the eye, for example. Look me inside my eyeball. If you're going to use that shtick, do the whole thing. Get on the internet and look up Darwin's quote that you folks like to mine so heavily. To suppose that the eye, with all its inimitable contrivances for adjusting the focus and blah 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 and all the various things the eye does, it's an amazing organ, um, could have been formed by natural selection, it seems, I freely confess, absurd in the highest degree. And then make sure to stop there, because if you continue reading, you'll realize that Darwin had explained this years ago. <laughs> this mind quote from Darwin is always used by the intelligent design and creationist types to argue that Darwin couldn't figure this out 150 years ago, and in all that time, we still couldn't figure it out. See, in the very next line, Darwin makes an interesting speculation. He says, Yet reason tells me that if numerous gradations from a perfect and complex eye to one very imperfect and simple, each grade being useful to its possessor can be shown to exist, then, well, basically Darwin noticed something. He noticed that several different animals have different types of eyes. Now, if you're really interested in this issue about the irreducible complexity of the eye, you'd have to read Darwin's full quote and then see other places where they've cited Darwin as a source. We've made a number of discoveries over the 150 years finding out that animals have eyes that are very finely tuned to their circumstances. We have found many examples of eyes that are very imperfect and simple, but with each grade being useful to its possessor. There are already plenty of videos on YouTube and many web pages that debunk this business of the irreducible complexity of the modern eye. Truth be told, um, irreducible complexity doesn't go any distance to undermining evolution nor should the observation of irreducible complexity make you not want to believe in God. If you wanted to undo evolution, which you'd have to demonstrate, it's not irreducible complexity, but unbuild upableness. That's a little hard to explain, but this is not really the focus for this video. I have to say with a measure of honesty that I didn't realize how difficult it was to make a YouTube video. You gotta make clips, you have to edit things out. Um, I'm taking a little snack break here. I like to take a raspberry strudel and uh, put my own icing on it. You'll see I've packed on some vanilla icing on it. That's, that's a lot of icing, actually. Um, I like it with a lot of icing. I imagine to some possessors it would be just fine as a plain raspberry strudel. Of course, to be fair, your main point isn't about cosmology. It's barely about biology. Ow, ow, ow. You're terrified of this conspiracy that's going on. <laughs> 
So the real question is, why are believers in the one camp, evolution, seeking to impose their faith on the other camp? Their worldview is steeped in a quasi-religious secularism. It's no secret by now that, that if you don't drink that scientific Kool-Aid, you are ostracized. Major, major persecution. These atheistic, secular zealots. The modern-day mind McCarthyism. They're like scientific political dictators from a religious cult. This Orwellian scientific establishment today. Based on your lack of knowledge of cosmology and biology and the peer review process or pretty much anything related to science, I'm going to assume that you're not a scientist. So uh, I can't help but wonder where you're getting your information. Ben Stein's movie. Oh, how embarrassing for you. Now, I need to interrupt myself to make an important point here. There was one thing you said in your video that is absolutely perfectly true. The fact that they conclude that intelligent causes were behind the creation of the universe and life does not negate them. It does not disqualify them as scientists. You see? Now you're right about that. Oh, and I should note too, if there's anyone who thinks I'm making fun of this guy by putting in a bunch of sound effects, that last boing is the only one I added in. He did all the others himself. The fact that they conclude that intelligent causes were behind the creation of the universe and life does not negate them, does not disqualify them as scientists. What you don't seem to realize about Ben Stein's movie is how it was fundamentally dishonest. There are many web pages that debunk the, the, the crazy myths that they were trying to propagate on there. Uh, it's, it's offensively dishonest. And I don't know how to convince you of that except to perhaps give you my own personal testimony. If, if you don't mind me borrowing that word from the born-again Christians. When I went to graduate school, my supervisor was a devout Christian. His main area was uh, coming up with mathematical models for explaining how mammals are able to navigate from one place to another. Now, in one year that I was in grad school, there were two unfortunate and unrelated incidents of children wandering away, um, one of them lost in the city, one of them lost in the country and uh, one of those children had died and uh, the other one was recovered after what's obviously a very traumatic experience. There was another professor in that department, an expert in child psychology. Now he was an atheist. The atheist and the Christian joined forces to develop a mathematical model that was based on an understanding of how all mammals, including humans, navigate in situations when they're lost. They were able to refine this model for human children lost in urban areas and lost in the country, and it's something that's been used by the Royal Canadian Mounted Police to help locate missing children. As you can imagine, the search for a missing child is a stressful and an emotional thing, and uh, that group had worked with several different people, many of them Christians, many of them not, and uh, there were always occasions when some of the team members would stop to pray and others wouldn't. So it was very clear to all the other scientists who were Christians and who weren't. Do you think those scientists worked to, to banish the Christians? No, they peaceably let them pray. I remember one guy asking a Christian, hey, I don't pray, can you do one for me as well? Major, major persecution. You see, that's just a myth that for some mysterious reason you choose to propagate. I can tell you honestly, in my experience, I've never seen it happen. Um, after grad school, my work went on to a more medical field. I worked in, uh, with um, anorexia nervosa, where we worked with an animal model. Knowing the common ancestry helped us discover things about neurotransmitter involvement that helped save the lives of human beings. I've since gone on to cancer research, where we've had to answer some of the most difficult questions about the very nature of this disease that's a great threat to, to human life. Because, you see, cancer is a very different disease. It's not like a cold or an STD or something that you can prevent with condoms or washing your hands. Cancer is something inside of us. It's part of our fundamental design. And yes, I use the word design. It doesn't matter if you want to use the word literally, as if there's a creator who designed us, or figuratively, as if it's something that's come through evolution. Frankly, I, define, I find the debate more than a little pointless. Now, don't get me wrong. I love watching idiots fight. I mean, these two dimwits are adorable. I could watch this all day. The band on YouTube, though, it's getting a little tiresome. Did you see Gear Up arguing with that TV while it was on pause and losing? You see, you tell people 
that they either have to turn away from science or they have to turn away from God. I don't think that's a choice that you should want them to make.